Welcome to SEM's Blitz for week seven of the high school football season. I'm Dan Wasner alongside Ty Reynolds and Patrick Petrosky. In this edition, we'll be talking about the Nib 12 West and Big Northern West games for this week in the area. We're going to open up the Nib 12 Big Northern West portion of the Blitz this week with Ottawa at Dixon. Duke's coming off their second win. It's uh, their first conference win since 2011, and they're going after their first two-game winning streak in the conference since 2006, which incidentally is also the last time they beat the Pirates. It's going to be at A.C. Bowers Field. Dixon's scoring 14 points a game and allowing 31. Ottawa has struggled to score lately, though. Uh, they've scored 16 points or fewer in four of their six games this year. They are only averaging 13.3 a game and allowing 33.3. The Pirates have lost three straight. Uh, they are 1-5 and five on the season. I think Dixon's going to have a big advantage here. J.D. Geeson, uh, quarterback, has 297 passing yards and 950, I'm sorry, 297 rushing yards and 951 passing yards. Quinton Douglas has run for 223 yards, and four Dixon receivers have at least 100 yards receiving, including three of them with more than 200. I think it's going to be tough for Ottawa to stop Dixon both on the ground and in the air. They might be able to limit the Dukes in one area, but I think they're going to struggle in the other. In the other hand, I think Dixon's defense is going to be fired up to come out and, and win at home after winning on the road last week. I think Dixon's going to take this one 16 to 16-13. Up next, we have the Nib 12 West rivalry game between the Sterling Golden Warriors and the Geneseo Maple Leafs. Unfortunately, this game lost a little bit of his luster last week. Coming in, everyone thought that Sterling and Geneseo would be playing this week to probably win the conference title. Instead, Sterling comes in 1-1 one one after losing 21-2 to Streeter. It was only the third time that Sterling had lost to Streeter since 1996. Um, the Warriors offensively just can't seem to find consistency. They can hit the big play here or there, but they can't seem to be able to turn out long drives, and then when they do, turnovers have kind of bit them. And that, that won't be a good thing against Geneseo. The Maple Leafs are coming off a 35-7 win over Ottawa. And they seem to be the cream of the crop in the M12 West. Comparing them to teams that Sterling have played this year, I think they're on the same level with Rochelle, and that did not go well for Sterling. Um, Geneseo has running backs like Ray Singebush and Ryan Webster, who will make life pretty tough on the Warriors. And while it's tough for this old Sterling player to say, my prediction is Geneseo wins 28-12. to To kick off the Big Northern, we have the Mendota Trojans visiting the Rock Falls Rockets. Rock Falls got rocked last week as they lost 64-8 to against Stillman Valley. Their high-powered offense got shut down, which is very uncharacteristic of them. Mendota is 2-4, and four, but the good news for the Rockets stops there. Mendota has played closely with the top three opponents in the conference, while Rock Falls has lost by big margins against them. It will be close, but the Trojans are going to get this one, 35-28. to Closing out the Nib 12 West, Big Northern West portion of the Blitz this week, we have Oregon at Winnebago. The Indians are 6-0 and and have scored at least four touchdowns in every game. They're scoring more than 40 points per game while allowing less than 25. Oregon, on the other hand, has won two of their last three. Um, got a big win over rival Byron uh, with a late field goal last week, 17-14. to um, They're scoring 24 points a game in their wins, but only 12 in their losses. Um, that. It's going to be tough. Uh, the, basically, it's basically saying if Oregon scores, you know, 24 points or more, they're, they've got a good chance to win. I don't think that's going to happen this week. Winnebago's defense is very good. Um, they've scored at least 22 points in each of the last four games. I'm sorry, they've allowed at least 22 points in each of the last four games, which is good for Oregon, who is coming uh, in with the fifth leading rusher in the area, and Nick Newman, who had a big game last week, including a big touchdown early in that game. He's got 568 yards in the season. He's going to be key. If he can get outside and get in the secondary for the Hawks, Winnebago um, you know, may have some trouble tackling him. I still think in the end it's going to be the Indians at home, 42-21.